Welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dear Alice. Today is part two on cabinetry. Guys, we had four pages of questions from you guys <laughs> about cabinets, and we felt like rather than abandon the other three pages, we're going to we just... We just got really tired on the first one, so we, we jumped ship. <laughs> we like, just felt like two. you were tired because it was almost an hour, so <laughs> we're going to be less wordy on part two, and we're going to answer all the rest of your questions. Rapid fire. Because we know this is a really big line item in all of your budgets, and there's a lot of questions, and we're just going to do the best. Suzanne is called one of our cabinet makers. And she's asked to him his ex expert opinion on a few things that we weren't positive on how to answer for you. So mm -hmm. we are ready um, to wrap up cabinetry in this episode um, with a lot more questions. So thanks for coming on back and talking about cabinetry with us. But a really quick word from our sponsor, Alice Lane. Um, they work so hard on the website. I'm part of that team that is always looking for the latest and greatest in new products or um, adding whatever products we can to our um, clearance even. So it every day is a new place. And um, we even do all the photography ourselves in-house. I'm trying to make videos for each of the products so that you can really see um, each of the items in motion and video. And we can tell you everything we can about how many stems are in the star that you're looking at and so forth and so on. So check it out. It's a really great place. Also right now we have our new digital lookbook where you can look through that digitally to see all of those beautiful product shots and even more details. So it's a really robust, beautiful way to shop the world in a very unique way. Um, the products are all unique to us and we're just so excited to be offering them. So that is alicelanehome.com. And um, yeah, it's just really trusted. It's lovely, beautiful. We're designing a lot of the products ourselves and sourcing them ourselves just to try and give you something unique in the marketplace to um, what other people are carrying. So again, Um, Okay, let's get into cabinetry. Hey. All right, so um, questions on refinishing your current cabinets. People get this a lot. Um, renovating homes is really popular. Mm -hmm. And you can see why it's something people want to do. It's like, mm -hmm. can I just keep the cabinets I have and refinish them? I think I could be just as happy with my exact same kitchen if it just weren't Naughty Alder. The color it is. <laughs> yeah, Naughty Alder. So um, one of the questions is, I'm doing a full reno. Do you recommend changing the style of all the fronts for a certain for a certain room? So it sounds like what these guys are doing is they're taking all the doors and drawers out. Mm -hmm. They're keeping the boxes, painting those a color, and then putting new fronts mm -hmm. on the old um, cabinetry, drawers and doors. So. Yeah. In doing that, like, let's just say they choose a shaker door front. Mm -hmm. Is the whole, should the whole house be shaker or is it okay if I do a white shaker kitchen and then the master bathroom is like a beautiful putty color and it's a different door style. And then the kids baths are Euro fronts. Uh, can you do that on a reno for a kitchen? And is it okay if they're different styles? Yeah, I think so. And I mean, even when we do like a new build and we're drawing up the cabinetry, Rarely are all the cabinetry going to be the same right. anyway. So same thing with a reno. It's just so labor intensive for you or for even someone else. No one wants to refinish your cabinets. Yeah, <laughs> It's just like bottom line. And it's just really hard because you have to sand, you have to like prime, you have to paint, you have to clear coat. Like it's just, it's miserable. And you're going to hate those cabinets when it's done because it's not going to look as lovely. It's just taking the doors off and putting new doors on. Mm -hmm. So I would for sure consider that like as my first option, if I was cool with the layout and the boxes, yeah, yeah, just get new doors and paint them whatever color makes sense with the design. And it doesn't make sense. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the same door style. No, no. Perfect. Yeah. And the hardware doesn't have to be the same either. No, no. Yeah. Give it a personality. Definitely. Okay. On the quality front, lots of questions. Um, people want to know what details should I watch for? As far as quality construction, are cabinets, 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 or are they different? Mm -hmm. And what makes one more quality than the other? What should they look for when they're trying to like choose a cabinet maker or when they're ordering their cabinets? How do they make sure that they build mm -hmm. a quality item? I would say do your research, you know, like trying to go and experience it. If you are looking at an Ikea kitchen, mm -hmm. go use them. Go use the door glides. If you're, if you're at a Home Depot price point, 
go use them, you know, mm-hmm. versus like going to an actual cabinet shop and feeling what those door glides use. They're going to be using a better quality hardware mm-hmm. that's going to last your kids pulling it out and slamming it back in, you know, and yeah. it's all going to be soft close. And it's just going to be a better quality hardware. And so I think the internal mechanisms mm-hmm. of your cabinetry, you're always going to want the soft close. You're always going to want the soft glide for your doors. And so I think just like by doing your research and like that will increase the lifetime. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be flipping this house, then whatever. But if you're planning on living here, then invest in the cabinet. Yeah, I agree. Corey, do you have anything yeah, else? Yeah, all, all of that. Also, if you're choosing between cabinet cabinet shops, just go into their showroom and test their stuff out and, you know, ask them about the hardware, um, you know, the drawer glides and the hinges and what they recommend. Yeah. And um, typically on a hinge, there are hinges that can uh, adjust three different ways. If it has more adjustments, I think that's a better quality hinge because mm-hmm. then you can align your uh, your gaps more evenly. Um, that's the gaps in between your doors and the gaps in between your drawer fronts and your doors. Um, so you want at least um, them to be able to um, adjust three different ways. So that's front and back, um, side to side, and then kind of like um, diagonally. So the top will push out and the bottom will push in. Mm-hmm. So uh, that I think is um, important because that's the mechanism that controls your everyday use of it. Your box mm-hmm. sitting there screwed into the walls, not going to change a ton. So that's mm-hmm. the difference in between um, builder grade and then custom mm-hmm. cabinetry. So, yeah. and then I think one of the things too, that could quickly like be a break for me anyway, is if they paint things cheaply, mm-hmm. you know? So I would go in, I would ask them their process, like how long will this door last? If like we're using it responsibly, that's not going to be chipping. What does your process look like? Yep. I think just, and in, in obviously the best way is just by referral. <laughs> if you know someone that's used this cabinet company and they look great still after how many years, mm-hmm. that's a good sign. Yeah. So do research. I would say the bare minimum too is three coats, rather that's, that could be a coat of primer and then two coats of lacquer or whatever, whatever they're using on top of that. But that's, that's kind of a a place to start. That's prior obviously to the clear coat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, The next one has to do with affordability. People want to know what are some unique designer outside the box ways to do a cabinet while on a budget? We give them a beautiful cat, a beautiful product, Yeah, but they're on a budget. This is what I would do. I would have like, for me, if I'm, I'm designing someone's home mm-hmm. and they need like a good, better, best option, mm-hmm. I would have my designer draw it up as it would ideally sit in the yes. layout and the sizing and scale and everything that it should be at with some design tricks, mm-hmm. then take it to your cabinet shop and have them, Value See engineer value engineer it. and Good be like, idea. this is like level one, level two, level Cadillac. So yep. I think that that's the best way to still not sacrifice, but to know your options uh-huh. going into it. Cause there's different types of cabinetry, you know, yeah. you have overlay, you have Euro, you have inset, all three mm-hmm. completely different price points. Totally. That will save you money in the long run if you do the base level, but still give you the look. Yeah. So. And there's some cabinet shops that might be semi-custom. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. might even be like, if we use a ready-made box and standardize your mm-hmm. your flow, right, your layout, then that might save you money because then you don't have to build custom boxes. Mm-hmm. Even though in your layout, you might show boxes that are a little larger or something like that. So maybe they fit in an extra box and shrink the size of the boxes or something like that. But they're going to know their own trade mm-hmm. and they're going to know how to do that affordably, but I like the idea of having it drawn up first. Totally. And then they can sort of kick it around and tell you like, oh, if we just did this or that and engineer it this way, it's going to save you X. And you're going to be like, that's worth it to me or that's yeah. not worth it to me. I'd rather pay mm-hmm. more and keep it, you know, like this. So you really understand what you're getting. Yeah. For Tiger Oak, we did this in like all the kids' bathrooms. Mm-hmm. It was cheaper to go, like they were really trying to cut costs, at, you know, in those secondary areas. And so we did more of a flat panel. Cause that was like where the price needed to be, mm-hmm. but we painted it an interesting color and we got great hardware Yeah, for the cabinet. So that's also mm-hmm. something like a flat panel is going to be your cheapest mm-hmm. versus having any styles and rails and borders around those boxes. So that's an option too. Also okay. species of wood, like, you know, a, mm-hmm. a walnut is going to be 
Um, I know I, I diss on alder all the time, but you can get a clear alder that is cheaper than walnut and you can stain it, you know what I mean? Any color that you would like to. So yeah, it's not ugly with knots and stuff. Or if you're doing a paint grade, most of the time it's maple. If you ask for a poplar, that's also a paint grade like wood. It's just not as like hard. So it'll be a little bit of a softer, mm -hmm. um, wood, but it's, it's cheaper. It's yeah. literally less than half the cost as far as board foot goes. Yeah. And if you have a super kick-ass countertop and great lighting, yeah. you can you can cut costs on your cabinetry and look like a million bucks. So that's great. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the design category. Um, are you seeing a shift more toward walnut and richer toned woods from white oak? I think genre of maximalism that's coming back. And I think with that comes like a little bit of history and stuff. And so that's where I think the walnuts. Mm -hmm are coming into play and interesting grains and cool combinations that yes. aren't all completely uniform. That's where I'm seeing like walnuts come back mm. and interesting figuring and stuff, but it's not everywhere. It's okay. usually on the Island or it's usually, you know, on, on a vanity here and there, mm -hmm. but then it's combined with, if you like that look, you probably like wallpaper and you probably like really funky hardware and cool lighting. And so we are seeing that, but it's in a more maximalist way. Yeah. So Totally. Um, our marketing is using words like dark academia, which is, a, which is the term that they're using on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And I think what it is, um, everybody's going to be like, no, it's this. But as far as my understanding goes, I'm not this generation, but it is the kids that read Harry Potter growing up. Mm -hmm. And um, there's All gorts. Yes. There's this whole <laughs> yeah. dark academia. They're adults now. They're in yeah. their 20s. And it's um, kind of scholastic and it's dark, right? And so it's this whole style, but maybe the girl is still wearing a bow in her hair mm -hmm. and it's like preppy, but dark. And so they like these really heavy, heavy spaces, right? Like Parcells Library. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, the idea of the library is so big. But how it's yeah. all dark in there and peacock yeah. and like rich, you know, ox blood tones and, serious. and all of that. Yeah. So that's one of the big search, the, one of the most searched terms right now, I guess, on Pinterest. Fascinating. And so I think that I like with this. that, I, I wouldn't think to buy a white oak and stain it super dark. I would just start out by using one of the darker, more traditional woods because they're trying for a really traditional, heavy design look. And um I think that's that's what means success to the younger generation. Much like we were working with this builder, I've explained this before, so sorry, but he's saying that the older couples that are like in their 40s and 50s and 60s are finding that they find more value in a contemporary, clean, edited Scandinavian look for their home. And the younger people are wanting traditional homes because they think there's more value in that. Mm -hmm. You know, That's because it looks them. like, yeah, it right. looks like they're successful. And so the really young folks mm -hmm. are loving this dark academia thing, which you think is flipped on its head. You'd be like, oh, it's the older people that like the traditional things. Mm -hmm. It's opposite mm -hmm. right now. So For anybody in a new build situation, these are the trends mm -hmm. that we're seeing yeah. amongst the higher, um, mm -hmm. like the really uh, custom custom builds. Yeah, that's yep. one of the trends the builder is seeing down in Dallas, Texas, where you just get to do a lot of gorgeous stuff. So anyway, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Um, but the cool thing is like you do you. That, that is really, I think the yeah. key of the day is everybody has a different design sense. So know what you like because mm -hmm. you might still be and always will be in the white oak club and that's yeah. okay. And you're just going to layer things differently as you know, your interests go simpler or more complex. So definitely. So it just depends on you. Yep. Honestly. I agree. Well, we all have these different styles, right? Like I'm living in a coastal looking beach house right now. Yeah. I'm going to be a white oak house, of course, because yeah. the finishes on a, a beachier home with a lot of windows are like light and bright, you know? Bleach out, yeah. And so that works great in a bright room and you're not trying to bleach out these really dark, sophisticated spaces, you know, with all these massive windows. Um, it's so very inauthentic. So. It just depends on the style that you're at and what your taste is, but we all find value in looking a certain way based on our different experiences. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard for us to sit here on a design podcast and say, this is out and this is in because it's a Renaissance and so many people respect so many different styles and to be you is also a really hot thing is authenticity. Yeah. And they're like, Oh my gosh, this is so you. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, just like lean into it, whatever it is. And your cabinet maker can help you get there with what species. You just show them the pictures. Make you so it's samples. your job to collect. Yes, to collect pictures. And then he can make you samples for you to sign off on. I love that. Okay. Also on designs, um, somebody, they always want to know this. What style will stand the test of time? How do I select my cabinets that are timeless? Oh, no. They don't want to have any regrets. Know who you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be my tip for you. Figure out exactly like what you're consistently drawn to. We do this a lot for clients. We will search through their Pinterest. And obviously Pinterest boards, I don't know, are so custom and that like they're only seeing things based off their algorithm. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing's going to be like populated in their feed, right? So search out for things. Look at Architectural Digest. Look at El Decor. Look at these shelter magazines and look in books, historic, new, and be like, hey, I am constantly drawn to this thing. And then that's what you should stay in. And be, and be okay to that you're going to evolve and add layers and nothing lasts forever. Yeah. You guys. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know how else better to answer that. Yeah, a white kitchen is always, is always classic, but a white kitchen might be so boring to you. You're gonna so like therefore it longer than you've been married so far. So you're going to like it for yeah. 15 years yeah. or whatever, you and know, ju I just, I think just get, you know, under the expectation that <clears throat> your tastes are going to change. You're going to want something different anyway. Yeah. So yeah, think about yourself 15 years from now. Did you have the same hairdo? Did you wear the same clothes? Did you wear the same type of footwear? Do you know what I mean? Just or, had spiky hair. <laughs> yeah, totally. And so she rocked it. Proud of it too. <laughs> Sue had an asymmetrical haircut. You betcha. She did not like it. She lasted one haircut, but she tried it. I know. Don't do it was that proof that I was living. <laughs> Don't do the asymmetrical no, haircut. No, do, do it with your hair. Don't do it with your cabinetry. Yeah. To exactly. Yep. Really well said, Sue. Yep. Good job. Okay. People want to talk about glass shelving versus wood. Okay. I don't think people are doing too much glass shelving. I think glass shelving was a thing when we were trying to light an interior glass cabinet mm -hmm. and you had a puck light at the top of that. And that light needed to stream through all your shelves to show all your beautiful china. Now we have different ways of lining up a cabinet and it's just, I don't know, there's just something almost too precious about putting things on glass in a kitchen. I don't know. So we're just not seeing it as much. Mm -hmm. No. So more um, wood. let's talk about when to do clear fronts versus solid, meaning glass cabinetry mm -hmm. for the face yeah. of the um, cabinet door. If you're a big collector and you love to display stuff and you hate dusting, then glass cabinetry is for a portion of your cabinet is for you. Yeah. Um, and I would say like in Rachel Parcells, we did that beautiful China cabinet mm -hmm. and it was in its own little quarantine section of the Kitchen. kitchen, different finish, was, different hinge yeah. or different um, hardware, hardware yeah. wallpapered interior, and it just shows off her piles and piles of future collected dishes. Entertainment. Yeah, it's an entertainer's trick. Uh huh. And so I think it's really it's fun. It's romantic. It's it is. French. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not one to like an exposed shelf, like a lot of time we'll like we'll be floating shelves in kitchens. But if you're like, that's just not me by like the look. You'll probably want a glass cabinet somewhere to like show off your cake plates or some collection. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's not obviously the whole kitchen, but it's either flanking the range or it's in its own spot like Rachel's. Mm -hmm. So just talk to your, look at your collections, look at your inventory. And then when you go to meet with your cabinet maker, say, I have this, where would be a good spot for this that I don't use them all the time. Mm -hmm. So let's have it over here where it's not in my everyday use space. Yeah. But I can admire it. Yes. And how do you like to light up a cabinet? We talked a little bit about the puck light. Yeah, and puck lights, I think, are of the past. Um, we honestly, there's, on the sides of these cabinets that are glass front, we'll do like a vertical channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we, not we, the cabinet maker. Let's be clear. Um, a recessed vertical channel, and we'll do an LED tape. that You can't see it, but it just, it sits vertical on the front, and it glows into the cabinet to light up what you're displaying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Okay. Yep. Awesome. That's a good trick. And I also yeah. think a lot of times people will light the underside of the uppers. Mm -hmm. We're really not doing it that 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 much. I feel like older people like it. They sure do. I won't define older for you, but you know who you are. Yeah. yeah. 
And if it's just like a sight thing, if you just want to have those on at night while you go get a, a glass of orange juice mm-hmm. or something like uh, of and warm that milk. makes you have you know, want some more milk. <laughs> <A post-up. laughs> a po- if you want me to hit up your postum, <laughs> you know, turn on, grab some tinctures uh, and supplements. Turn you on might your, like an underground because the other one's too harsh. Yes. Yeah. So then, then that's great for you. But Honestly, I, don't, I we're not really specifying it too much. If we want to light something, we're going to do it in the vertical way. Yeah. And there's enough like dimmers and other lighting tricks that we're doing up top mm-hmm. that satisfy the functionality and the prettiness of a house. They're going to tell their cabinet guy to do it when we're not looking. And they're like, oh my gosh, what a surprise. <laughs> they're just like, it's on a different switch. <laughs> <laughs> or it comes out when it comes on with the pendant lights. And you're yeah. like, duh, the, no. cab- the cabinets have a halo around them. <laughs> yeah. Some people like it. So who are we to say that's not right? You do you. (laughs) Um, Any tips and tricks for the design layout of a kitchen? I think the thing we, this is one of the things we do at the very beginning of a project is we usually reorient the whole kitchen um, based on just like functionality, what we know. Based on, we do it different than the architect. (laughs) 100%. And they always have these like really, not always, some aren't, whatever. They always do it like where the triangle, and when I say triangle, that is the proximity of your sink, your main sink, to your range, to your fridge and freezer. And if those are like tight enough that you can see yourself working really efficiently, then that's a good start. And then we'll kind of work around that. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have that at the beginning. So if you're getting your first draft of plans, just know that that's okay to change up, please. Yeah, and you can have so, more than one triangle yeah. in the kitchen, more than one work triangle, because it seems like there's more than one island sometimes mm-hmm. in a custom home. And also sometimes the architects don't even think about the work triangle, and then we get to think about the work triangle. Because yeah. there's just certain efficiencies that you want if you are a cook. A lot of people don't cook anymore. The kitchen is just a toolbox for people to admire. To, sit, to set your door dash on Perhaps top of. Perhaps <laughs> so they'll make toast in the morning or yeah. something or on a lonely Sunday. Post them. And post them. <laughs> 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 or something. I don't know. A lot of people don't cook. Isn't that crazy? But um, anyway, but they have the islands and, yep. and everything else. So work triangles are a thing um, that either people are ignore or don't ignore. Or if you're really smart, they'll get several triangles mm-hmm. for you know, sometimes women like to bake and men like to handle meat. You know, sometimes women like to handle the meat and, and do the baking. Yeah. It, everybody likes to do it a different way, but I think it's really cute when couples both like to cook and they both have a certain way they like to do it. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of interview the homeowner and then just find out what their preferences are and then yeah. you can design for that. Yeah. As far as look and feel though on the kitchen... Mm-hmm. I particularly love to hide a lot of small appliances in the island. For sure. And I indeed do like the appliance garage. Or in a butler's pantry or like a back pantry, yes. the dirty kitchen. Tell them about that. Okay. So the dirty kitchen, a lot of homes that we do have what we call like a show kitchen, which is the beautiful place that they spread their door dash on uh-huh. <laughs> or, or maybe they're cooking and they just have like this lovely party place. Right. But then like behind, like in the, Say like you have your range wall, you'll have a big pantry and it's usually a little bit more linear and you have other secondary appliances that you need. If you're like, I have to have another double oven, you might throw that in there. If you have like, you usually have another sink back there and you'll have these like spots. Or a blender and your your significant other wants to blend a protein shake. Yeah. All his powders or her powders are back there with the blender. The, what's that thing that sounds like a a helicopter's taking off in your house? Blendtec. Yes, that thing. Or the, it's just going off yeah. and it's in the dirty kitchen. And so it's not as loud in the main kitchen. And doesn't make the mess, you mm-hmm. know, which you're always or trying to keep up they on. they want to make toast. You know, a lot of times they'll keep the toast and the butter. Yeah. And, or like know, a morning station things. for the kids. You yeah. Know? A coffee maker might be back yeah. there. So there's a lot of really cool ways. Um, pantries have definitely gotten bigger. Certain appliances are going back there now. Mm-hmm. So um, it's kind of like having two kitchens. I would say most like, tabletop appliances like are going back Jewish there. It's like Jewish now. There's like a kosher kitchen and a regular kitchen. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. anyway. dirty and clean. Yeah. And so then you have obviously multiple work triangles because there's different ways that you're using those two spaces. So, mm-hmm. anyway, so just understand how you work and design it for that. Yes. Like really walk the space with your cabinet maker mm-hmm. and understand that and modify until it's exactly right. Yep. So make sure your pathways are clear. If you have a range wall, this is one thing I will say 
when you walk into the kitchen, you're like walking through it in the plans and you walk into the fridge wall. What a bummer. <laughs> walk into the range. The range is and that, the hood and everything is just like the money shot. It's the most beautiful thing. It's and, the biggest prong in any diamond. You know what I mean? You're parking a car in there a lot of yeah. times. And so just make sure that that's what you see. And then the fridge and all those things are kind of secondary behind you on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Your sink can be in front of a beautiful window mm-hmm. and countertops. And that's lovely. When Sue says you're parking a car in there a lot of times, we say that because the price of your stove and that range hood is the price of a small car. It is. And it's expensive it and it's your, and it <laughs> legit is your money shot. And so you want to see that kitchen centered on that beautiful big range in that range hood. And you're looking for it the whole way, cause, the whole time, because it's your true north. And then when you see it, then you're like, okay, now bearings. I can orient myself. I know what to do. So I love a centered stove. I actually don't like a stove on an island. Because they're, they're like, where do I put that? It's like hazardous for kids too. I feel like they're just going to be like. Yeah. And they're like, it all it's, up in a, there. it's induction. It just looks like a sheet of glass. And then they have a hood above it. And you're like, okay. And then you have to have wall ovens, which yeah. today we don't do wall ovens. We just put the whole range mm-hmm. under the oven. It's just you get a 60 inch inches. range with yeah. two full size oven is what we do most often. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. so it's hard for people that have wall ovens. It's hard for them to be like, but what about the wall ovens? You're like, they're under the stove. <laughs> yeah. It's, yep. one, it's one big thing. It looks awesome. Yep. Yeah. You're going to love it. Yep. So, cool. Well, um, okay. Do you like the look of flat panel drawer fronts mixed with shaker doors? I like the look of a simple panel with the bead around it. We mentioned that in the first cabinetry yeah. podcast. Um, that's my favorite, you know, and then that second door can have, I, my favorite type of door style is technically it's still a shaker, mm-hmm. but like the minimum on that panel rail, right? The style on the rail. Mm-hmm. Is like two inches for just like construction wise. Yeah. I like a more refined shaker border like that. And then I usually like a little bit of a detail trim inside that. So it doesn't look like a shaker. Right. It's just a, you know, a cliff edge Mm -hmm. that goes back to that back portion. I think that's a prettier graduation. And honestly, I think that's the most timeless Mm -hmm. door style from our experience. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Not going out of style. We said your word. Yes. Yep. That's great. Um, okay, we'll we let already, Corey sing it next time. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't already, be better. That's we already sure. talked about cabinetry lighting. Um, let's talk about storage. Oh, you guys, Appliance garages, worth it or a waste? I still like them. And it's I not, too. I don't think it's necessary. It's not the old ones that you used to have, like in your it mom's kitchen. It doesn't have a roll top. No, it's not a roll top. Even yeah. though we did do that in Tiger Oak and it was quite charming, but the functionality of those is a little outdated. So we often will do like if a you're lift, gonna, we'll have a lift or we'll have an actual door, but the cabinetry, the whole door goes down to the countertop mm-hmm. and then you open that up and, and your appliances are just sitting on the countertop yeah. inside. And then you just lift that door up and out of the way and they pull out the make, blender or the toaster and you make do, a tropical smoothie, you make a tropical smoothie. Yep. And then you put the base back and wash and the it's top. all plugged in back there. It's great. Yeah, it is great. I think it's and super it smart. it looks like cabinetry that just comes down. Yeah. Nobody knows there's an appliance garage yeah. in there. It's a tower. And we'll do that often for just like these morning stations we talk about where we have, mm-hmm. like, it's almost like a secretary, right? Where you have like the countertop, you have two doors that like open up like French doors, right? Yeah. And then you have everything there. You have a coffee maker, you have your blend tech or whatever mm-hmm. different things you have in there. And you have all the fixings. All yeah. the postums, your bread tea bags, maker, whatever you got. <laughs> tea bags, it's anything you want. You betcha. And this now, is your kitchen. We're now 100 years old. You and you have some under cabinet lighting under there to light it up. So. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Oh, okay. Okay. People want to know how to hide a microwave. Can it go inside of a cabinet? They want to know. A lot of times in the dirty kitchen, a lot of people will put it back there. But honestly, Jess has always said this that the microwave. It should be next to the fridge and freezer because that's what you're heating up. Yep. It's so always the, coming out of there. Yeah. It's cold and you need to you need to warm it up unless it's like ramen or something. Yeah. And you yeah. don't want to see it above your stove. You're not doing that anymore and you're mm. not... It's not a range hood, And you're people. not having it on top of your countertop either just because that's yeah. valuable real estate. So we love the microwave drawers, the Bosch one. I love that one. Under the cabinet. Yep. You're not so, ever looking into the thing. No, and it's usually you a don't want to make eye contact with the microwave if you're standing. 
hmm, I'd rather see a really cool countertop. So you're going to have it under the countertop. That's the best way to do it. And by under, we don't mean mount it under the uppers. <laughs> <laughs> cool <laughs> idea though. With magnets and Velcro, <laughs> we mean put it in your lower cabinetry. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, which is best for the depth Next of it. Next to the fridge also. and freezer. Yeah. Yep. And exactly. the countertops above it. So when you microwave, then you can either stir it in there or you can pull it up onto the countertop, stir it, stick it back in. Can you tell and one of us shops in the freezer section at the grocery store? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not obviously, the, it's not the microwave that goes like open side out like it would be like a normal countertop. It's the drawer. When the microwave comes yes. out, you're standing up and you can look inside and say, yeah, that's hot. That's ready. Take it out, put it on your countertop. You're not like getting on all fours. I actually and am. Opening a door. I have a I have a door swing. Oh, you do. And I'm just under the countertop. Yeah, you get your drawer. So you gotta like bend down and get in there. That's hard. I know. I am five eight. It's real oh, hard to. It's a leggy blonde. I've had to overcome some hard grips. Oh man. Um, but I'd still do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's it's where awesome. you're going to put your microwave, guys. Yep. We ha- we do hide them in pantries though too, if that's not an option. Have for you ever some put reason. one inside of a cabinet, like? Open the cabinet door. Oh my gosh, there's a microwave in my cabinet. Have you ever no. done that? I did in my old house. I loved it. It was right next you to loved my fridge. It. Yeah. 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 You do it again. I would. Yeah. It's like, I, I think it's the ugliest appliance. So just get it out of the way. Yeah. Shut a door on it. Is that safe? It won't like heat up the cabinet. Right? Um, <laughs> Corey shrugging his shoulders. We don't yeah, know right now. I don't know. I mean, it <laughs> works. Out. It <laughs> works. I think some people put like a Safety solid matters. surface in there. So they'll do like, a oh, piece of their, yeah, yeah. So that's nice. I mean, yeah. that's, I don't even know why. Corey's like, radiation, that. does it matter? Uh, I don't know. I wear, Is a microwave he's safe? Like, I, wear a, I wear a lead apron when I do it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, it just depends on your kitchen, whatever, you know, just like try and get it out of the way. I would rather have it behind a door mm. than sitting on the countertop. Yeah. For sure. Yep. What are your cabinet must-haves in order to feel like it's luxurious? These are your must-haves, not options. Awesome hardware. Yeah, for sure. Where's yeah. your favorite place to get awesome hardware, Corey? Um, I can't even think of where I bought my hardware, but you showed me the website. I can't remember. The ones that we Was use it signature probably- hardware? Mm-hmm. Signature hardware is like good, like that you're going to get a look and that's something that anybody can access online mm-hmm. the, and they carry a ton of different lines. But the ones that we use most often for the kitchens that we work in, Rocky Mountain is like the creme de la creme of hardware. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful, but you're like a hundred dollars. A no. pole. Yeah. And not, yeah, probably not. But it's going to feel like it when you touch yeah. it and open it. You're like, man, this feels good. So when you sold all your stock and you were ready to blow some money, that's a great place to go. Yeah. If you're like, I just really want great hardware. If you're looking for some emergency currency, you could just sell your Hide hardware. It. I know, yeah. for reals. Yeah. Um, it's going to be worth thousands of dollars. Yeah. Or if you want to spend hundreds or a little over a hundred, then we have options for that too. Yeah. And so I'd go Rocky Mountain top. Mm-hmm. Ashley Norton. Thousands. Yeah. Ashley Norton second. And then I go like M tech top knobs are like mid range, mm-hmm. but really like great options. Really pretty. And then we'll get into decorative stuff like for like little girls cabinetries and stuff like and throw and, and things like that. But yeah, just great mm-hmm. hardware. Just make sure Everything it has like good fitters. style. Oh yeah. yeah. Or from top topic. Just kidding. Yeah. Hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, funny. but yeah. And if you're, if you're curious on how it's going to feel the weight of it, just order one of a few of them and see which one you like and which finish you like. Mm-hmm. Because some of the finishes might blow, <laughs> not be good at all. Yeah. So, so actually feel it in your hands. And I think, but I think cabinetry, I think, I mean, as far as must haves for a luxury kitchen. Awesome range head. Yeah. An awesome range head, a beautiful range, I think too, since that is that money shot. I think the ice maker, Jess, you have an ice maker. And I think yeah. it's just like, it's on everyone's wish list just to have that. And yeah. And you know, I have to say there's a difference. We're, we're building a new building right now and I'm putting two different ice makers in the building. One in the back of the house for all the employees, one in the front of the house for all the customers. I did the um, Scotsman for the front, mm-hmm. $3,400. And then I did the KitchenAid Cuber for the back. Cause that one's actually my favorite and it doesn't melt as fast. And I'm a really slow drinker. And so um, the Cuber is a thousand dollars. That's so great. you can have an ice maker for a thousand dollars and feel like you 
run the world. You'll feel like Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, like the KitchenAid cube, it's a little half inch by half inch by half inch, perfectly clear cube. Mm-hmm. And um, is it just like a drawer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's really thin. It's thinner than your, I wouldn't say it's only like your 12, 12, 15 inches wide. Yeah. It's, it's like really no big deal. You can fit it right next to your fridge or freezer. And you just need a water it's line and power. Appliance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's awesome. so great. That's you just like, reach in there with your silver scoop and it's like fun party trick. Do I live at Swig? Why yeah. am I so awesome? <laughs> um, you guys, there's this funny Olivia trend Rodrigo, in come on over. <laughs> and it's like spreading into Arizona and Idaho and there's Texas. And Texas, yes, Dallas it's getting, is getting some. It's called Swig. Our one of our best friends owns it, and it is just like a drink stop. And you order what you want. Hi, I'll get a diet coke, extra ice, extra lime. Thank you. Or they put like coconut cream in it, or whatever. What's your drink at Swig, you guys? I do the fruit water. Fruit water, yeah. Good. I do like the fighter. I like the fighter. The fruit water is like a, a coconut water with it has mangoes. And strawberries chopped up in it. Mm-hmm. It's so. got a shot of sugar-free coconut, a shot of sugar-free vanilla, chopped up frozen mangoes, chopped up frozen strawberries in the bottom. And they give you a fat straw so you can suck up the tiny chunks yeah, of fruit. That's it's the good. best. Yeah, it's super good. You can also get it with carbonated water. Oh, yeah. What's your drink? I alternate. I alternate between like a Texas tab, which is a Dr. Pepper blend. If I'm feeling sugary, usually in the fall. Yeah. I'll go that with that Dr. Pepper. Or like I do the founder, which is Diet wait, Coke, wait. lime. No, no, you didn't say what's in it. What's in the fighter? Oh, the fighter is the water. I have like three, depending on oh, the season. Got it. The what's fighter. The, okay, yeah. The fighter is just a really. It's like water. I think it does have a shot of coconut, lime, um, strawberries, and probably me. Anyway, I can't even remember. Look it up, guys. You're gonna be okay. blown away by the menu. <laughs> You're yeah. gonna be. You may they be also overwhelmed. Sell cookies. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah, it's got a social sugar, which is a tiny little sugar cookie, or you can get yourself a big sugar cookie, mm-hmm. or a dirt ball, which is a chocolate cookie with chocolate it's frosting. Like a fudgy one. So we're just so used to driving through and getting ourselves a fresh bev, getting the kids a shark attack. Yeah, and, and a pop and pineapple, a cookie, <laughs> and you just drive around on all your errands and. Turns out they don't have them in other states. And so we just got our little routine out here in the West and we're just doing all of our things. And then we're like, uh, what do I do? I'm in North Carolina. I got to go to a Seven Eleven and get myself a dirty freaking fountain <laughs> drink and there's no service and there's no mix-ins. So they don't have a, fruit water. They don't have frozen no, strawberries. That's we're so no. spoiled. Anyway, I'm excited for everybody listening to someday get a swig. Uh, it'll just life changing it and really it's not that it's not that deep, but it real sure it becomes a quick habit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's in a drive through, which is everybody's like, it's my, it's yeah. my you thing. You get out of your car and no. they hand you a styrofoam cup filled Basically with living in Wally. And, <laughs> and, a don't get on my and seat. they wipe off the cup before they give it to you. So it's not sticky and it's a dream. Anyway, you can feel like that in your own home if you get an yeah, ice, maker. ice maker. It's a luxury. It's you can a get your luxury. own syrups. So you can fun. get whatever you want. You can serve your friends, go out and sunset on the deck. It's so much the fun. The teenagers are going to love it. It's guys. the best. It's so I love fun. an ice maker. Um, I can't believe we spend that much time on ice I know. Makers, you're, you're welcome, welcome. Swig. Yes. <laughs> sponsored. Um, yes. Ooh, that should be. I think, I think too, I think one other thing too is just like most people don't want to see their trash outside of a cabinet. So you're going to have a trash drawer. You're going to have a recycled drawer. Yeah. Yes. So just make sure you're like planning Must for have. those things those are great too just like the ugly the stuff that needs drawer. to be contained Let's talk about the dishwasher drawer oh that's fantastic okay yeah you Everything heard us right drawer these days hold on yeah. what yeah. is a Fridge dishwasher drawer? i don't even know so glad you asked listen friend you get two that stack on top of each other for the same width as your dishwasher a 24 inch wide oh, dishwasher what? That, that's right you can just only wash your breakfast dishes just load it up push play so it's just, I took you the just kids out of town. You don't have to wait to fill up the whole dishwasher. To okay. run it. Yeah. yeah shame Isn't will not be yours. Crazy? <laughs> I always, I always run a half full. I'm the worst. I know. Well I just, then there you go. But, but you got yeah, your own drawer. I, I think that's probably more economical. Yeah. To yeah. Do that. People love them that have them and they have two. Um, unless it's just like a small little something, then they just put one in it, you know, but so this isn't in lieu of, a dishwasher. This is just like you have it for extra for little it's, small it's loads. It's the new dishwasher. Oh, it's okay. like you just get dishwasher drawers and then you just run a half load all the time because you only have to run half of it. Okay. It's hard for cookie That's sheets. Awesome. Like you like you're just was, washing those by hand anyway though. You know what I mean? Do you? You should. They yeah. Oh, maybe. Cause they, they, <laughs> <Good to know. laughs> they ruined, <laughs> we ruined plenty I'm of them. them. And we're like, Amateur. what the hell? Like, like why oxidize, is this? You know? Um, Get yeah. yucky. Yeah. I'm yeah. one of those it's people though. I'm one of those people. Like if it's too hard to clean, sometimes I throw it away. 
Tommy Road didn't. To Tommy Day. didn't hear that from me. It's just like life is hard enough. I don't like, have where time. Did all, where did all our dishes <laughs> go? It's only when it's really bad. I'm just like I didn't cook this, and I do not want to clean it. Just as a cry. This is garbage. She's full of pyre- <laughs> Pyrex in ten by fourteen. Oh my, oh my gosh, that is awesome. I'm crying right now. That's amazing. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've done that, ladies or gents. <laughs> oh, man. Do you know what I want to throw away right now? I want to throw away, like, all my old stuff that I've had since I got married. Like You should. I The other day, we were pilling. It's so it. fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so... <laughs> I'm crying. Like, I was using I'm 35 her, pregnants, but I feel like 100 pounds lighter. Peeler, like. And I was like, surely there's a new idea on potato peeling. I've been married oh. 25 years. I have one for you. Well, I just We're going to have a podcast on, on that. Amazon. Maybe I'll throw away the old one when I get it. I really oh, you know what one. else I hate? Mm. When somebody gives you a seasonal spatula. Boo. Here's a spatula with snowflakes oh, I on know. it. I know. You're using it all the time. Never trust a skinny cook. I have one from oh, somebody on that with that writing. Don't write stuff or decorate my stuff. It's going to scrape my eggs. Yeah. Like... Yeah. I'm not interested. Oh, That'll also, be the first thing. Also, 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 do not give it to me on Christmas day. That's precisely the day that you can only use it. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, uh, snowflakes. I'll put it like, in the seasonal box and bring it out I'm next so Christmas. I'm so mad about it. That's, <laughs> this is my whole kitchen. It's a seasonal something that doesn't belong <laughs> there. I'm going to throw it away. You should. You're welcome, everybody. It's Thanks for fun. listening. <laughs> no, permission. What were we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about um, island do's and don'ts. How about that? Oh, yeah. island do's and don'ts. Don't make it too big that you have crappy pathways. Amen. Ooh, what should the pathway be? What do you minimum do? three feet? I think between f- four feet is ideal. Yeah, so I think figure four feet out right. where the oven is because when that oven's door, you can't. The oven door. I dare down, say five the feet there. Your doors down. You don't have to jump over those. You are landlocked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I dare say five feet in front of the oven. Five amen, to even sister. six feet, if, especially if you're centering your sink with your range. Yeah. On your island, right? Because then, like, someone can be standing here. Someone can be at the range. Putting the door down. Feet. I think six feet might feel too deep, too far apart, but you throw stuff away. So oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Little Louie might just like walk right between us uh, and then like, yeah. where will we be? He'll fall. Yeah, totally. He'll three, f- I mean, three is code, but I agree. If you've got doors down and they're hot and steamy, I think giving yourself an extra foot's really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. so five feet foot or two. Yeah. yeah. That's luxury. Yeah. Any other kitchen island do's or don'ts? Um, we talked about the range. We don't love doing ranges on the island. Yeah. So avoid that. You can do, if you like, we do a lot of kitchens where they might have a beautiful window looking out to some, you know, some mm-hmm. beautiful view and they want to look out that. And that might be where like their big sink goes. Mm-hmm. And so we're always going to put just to lessen, mm-hmm. to lessen that work triangle and keep it tighter. We'll do a prep sink yeah, or something in the islands to keep that close for cooking and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, appliances. I love hiding stuff in there. Uh, garbage cans. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's like we said, that's really great. Dishwasher drawers or doors. Um, I don't know of anything really great that can go under the, under the sink. There's just so many pipes and everything else. So mm-hmm. I don't have any really great solutions on that. Mm-hmm. Um, Really cool new sink system that everybody should know about for the kitchen island if your sink is in there. The gallery, the gallery galley. sink, galley sink. Mm-hmm. Tell them about that. It's so fun. It comes in like different widths. Like I think the smallest is thirty six, and it goes up to like forty two or forty four, and then like it just keeps getting bigger and, and it goes all the way up to seventy two inch. It sink. can get huge, but yeah. it's so fun because it's a stainless steel sink. Mm-hmm. But then you have like multiple faucets. It's not like you just have one faucet in the middle. You might have two or even three. Or, you know, depending on how long you are, but then they have all these rad things on the top that you can like, it has like a drainer. So you have like all your fruit sitting there and then you have like a little cutting board for like your cheeses and stuff. So it becomes almost this like charcuterie board. It feels like serving a line. It feels yeah. like a restaurant and so, so cool. It's such a fun trick. You have to Google If you're it. an entertainer, yeah, you love it. It's so mm-hmm. fun. I love that they come in all those sizes. That's like your dream house is to get the galley sink someday. I just think it's... Mm-hmm. It's you can fill it up with ice portions of it and put all your different all your bottles, your bottles and, and cokes and, and all that. So. You just look like the ultimate entertainer. It's mm-hmm. really culinary, which is like the hottest thing. Um, one question we didn't get asked, but I feel like um, 
I feel like is a good question to ask and think about is the floating shelf still, Mm -hmm. is it a thing? I love it. I do. I love using them. Um, It's just like shelves and then you put all your dishes on those and all your glasses. It looks culinary like a restaurant, especially if you have all the same silhouettes, um, all of your edges match. Um, I love putting a little floating lamp up there and having that just stay on all night and just like bottles of French lemonades or Pellegrinos up on the top shelf that you can't reach as easily. And then just all your dishes right there at your fingertips that you're using every day. So you don't have to open a cupboard and get it out. This is definitely more casual um, than dressy. You can definitely dress it up, but um, it's something that's been trending for a long time. My house is seven and a half years old and I have it and I'd still do it again. So we just installed one in Dallas and like I was looking back at it and I was like, so pretty. It's, it's absolutely perfect. Amazing. It feels very culinary. It takes the guessing out of what's behind cabinet door. Number one Mm -hmm. for the people that are helping you get ready for a party and I don't know. I just love the no nonsense of it. And again, the styling is so fly. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. So good. I think that answers all the questions. Thanks so much guys for tuning in again for cabinetry part two. A quick word from Alice Lane. Yes. We have such a great team of in-home furniture stylists. And I think it's called the front is it in-home furniture for uh, the furniture design team. Yeah. yeah. And it's so great. And we wanted everybody to be able to have help and a mm-hmm. designer to help them place things in a smart way. And so that's when this whole crew got developed and we hired this really lovely designers and they actually help you, you know, with a floor plan, figure out what you need for furniture and they'll help you space plan and everything. And it's complimentary. Um, but you can, they'll tell you exactly what to buy, what scale to buy it at, and they'll, they'll help you with the whole it, process. Your fabrics, they'll tell you what size your sectional should be in your space. And mm-hmm. if you do that sectional, what the sofa table should be behind it and what mm-hmm. the finish should be. And they'll even help you accessorize your built-ins yeah. for free. Yeah. It's and it's crazy. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's such a beautiful thing because I think it's one of those, those things that it's daunting to a lot of people that they need to furnish this room, but what do I do? What mistakes do I not make? Yes. And this takes all that away Mm -hmm. and the service is complimentary and they'll tell you exactly the game plan of what you need to do. One room at a time you buy the furniture and then they'll move on and do another room. They'll even tell you what wallpaper to put in your powder bath. Mm -hmm. They'll show you all your options. So it's an awesome service. Um, We have, it's available Right now, um, you can call the store and ask for somebody from the um, furniture design team mm-hmm. to help you on a space and they'll get you started or you can go online and there's a tab for that too. Mm-hmm. At so, Alice Lane Home. Alice Lane Home. Home. Com. Yep. Yes. It's such a great service. It's probably one of the most popular things yeah. right now if you already have a home and just need help furnishing it. So. Yeah, they do a beautiful job. So yeah. don't waste any time. Definitely, Definitely request some help. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We will catch you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 